Oh, we got a gnarly looking little tool here for you all today. I put this up on the Instagram channel. You guys wanted to see a review on it. The King Arthur Squire. Let's get it started. So, is this thing a little scary? No, it is. This thing is no joke. We're going to do some carving here. Now, if you watch the Instagram channel, you've probably seen a lot of the wavy flags that we've been making. Well, this right here has really helped me do that a lot faster. I'm going to talk about some of the good things and some of the downsides. If you're starting to look to wood carving, you know, maybe as a hobby or something that you want to do to make a little extra money, this might come in handy for you, but there's limitations. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually show you how I carve one of these wavy flags. The reason why I went with this was because it's going to be a lot faster than the disc here that we use for the first flag. I told you I wish I would have done things a little bit different. This is one of the things I wish I would have done a little bit different. Now we're still going to use this here towards the end because this King Arthur, it is gnarly. It is going to chop and slice and dice all kind of things. We're going to smooth it out with that. So the first things first, this is how you want to put the scene together. When that chain falls off, when you take it out of the package you're gonna sit there and scratch your head and say is it broke well no it's not so basically you get that little chain right here and all it is is a chainsaw chain really this thing ran me thirty dollars when I was thirty dollars and ninety nine cents so thirty one bucks really not that bad Harbor Freight actually has these and from what I'm hearing they're pretty much the same thing you know I'm guessing maybe the same brand with just a different name so we're gonna put this on like so and then this top cap goes on you have to make sure that when you put this on everything is nice and even you don't want anything hanging off the side you don't want it lopsided because if that chain comes off man spinning at how many rpm you're asking for it so you got to make sure that you get it all even on all sides now this is an 18 tooth blade and it's a 5 8 of an inch center hole on this but again you can see here everything is even we're going to slide this on real nice and careful like and then we're going to crank this thing down and when I say crank it make sure this thing is tight if you don't put this on the way it's supposed to be put on I'm telling you this thing will start whipping around it's going to start hitting the guard and who knows what else we're going to tighten it down real nice and tight and then we're going to rock and roll with this here we're going to we're going to start carving we're going to slice and dice it now here's the thing with this what I like about it, it's, it takes large amounts of wood when you're carving out. The one thing I do not like about it is it's not, it's not very uniform. And it's also a little bit smaller than I thought. They're saying this thing is supposed to be four inches. And you're probably looking at like three, three and a half inches. I mean, it is a lot smaller than I thought it would be, which really makes it hard. And when you're trying to get down to those areas, it just wants to kick back. So do not remove the guard off of this grinder when you are using this thing. Now you can make really nice deep lines with this tool. That's what I like about it. I think it's really good for detail work. And FYI, you definitely want to use your hand with this because it will grab and it will kick. I'm telling you, you'll see it. So let's throw our handle on. I'm going to start this bad boy up. And the reason why we're using the Octane Grinder, I like it because it keeps it going without having to pull a trigger. And the other thing is, it sort of has this anti-kick. So when it catches and grabs and wants to kick back, it shuts the grinder down. So I like the Rigid Octane. All right, we're tight. Now this guard here, it's easier to adjust. We have a review on this. You can check it out. But we're going to have to remove that guard or move it back and forth anyway rotate it what we're going to do here is we're going to create a couple lines here and we're going to start chopping some of this wood off here and all these are are a couple two by sixes cut in half they're planed down they use a rigid octane planer for this you can see that video and we also did a full video on how to make these flags but i do have them in some messy clamps and we're just drawing our lines out right here and this is what we're going to shave down. We're going to take these off. We're going to have our high spots or low spots. And what's nice about using this King Arthur is it's going to be a heck of a lot faster than the way we did it the last time using that. It was almost a sanding disc really. 
Now, once you figure out where all your waves are going to be, your high spots, your low spots, how you want this thing to look, it's time to start cutting. I got to watch out for my Bessie clamp right here. I don't want to hit that. So I'll be moving that a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right as I'm doing this. But here we go. I'm going to let you hear what this sounds like here in a second. But look how fast it takes that down very quickly. All right, turn down your volume because I'm going to let you hear how this is starting to sound. And... Uh, Again, it removes the stuff really quick. But you have to be careful because if you go too fast with this, it'll it'll remove large, large amounts of wood and you might not want that. You know, another issue I had about this is when this starts going out, how are you gonna sharpen it? Uh, one of the issues that I have with this is look at the big gouges it takes out. It does take some practice and eventually it does get a little bit easier, but I noticed that because this thing is a lot smaller than I thought it was, it makes it a lot harder to actually feather this stuff out. So that's why we're going to use that grinding disc again, that sanding disc really. Check it out, it definitely removes a lot of wood. Now another thing that I like about this is that it actually removes this wood in a chip form not dust so you're gonna have large chips everywhere and you can see those gouges we'll try to smooth that out a little bit but it's not that easy with this now let me show you what I'm talking about when I say it's a little bit smaller and it makes it a little bit harder when I'm trying to smooth that out like that it's just really hard to get into those tighter crevices If this was a little bit larger, it would be a lot easier. And a lot of people, they might be tempted to remove that guard. Just don't do that. If this thing kicks back, I'm telling you, it's going to take your finger off. Now, as you can see, we're making one hell of a mess, but I'd rather deal with the chips than the dust. Trust me. So you're going to have this stuff all over the place, but again, much rather have that. Now the one thing that this can do that a lot of the others can't do is make a really solid line. This is a big plus because now you can actually carve out where you want that wood to be or whatever you're doing. You know, I see people making, I don't know, grizzly bears out of logs with these things. So, you know, I'm no, no artist when it comes to, you know, that. But I will be honest, I do like that. It makes it a lot easier when I'm trying to create those waves. And it's really quick. So now that I got my second line, I know that's where the wave's going. I'm going to start tearing this stuff out. And again, I just wish that this was a little bit larger. Or maybe a half an inch would make a world of difference. But again, you can see it, it's just taking that down. You know, if you take long passes, it actually isn't that bad. You're still going to end up with those gouges, but it works out pretty well. You can clean that up on the side like so. I think this is an excellent tool for the price range for somebody that's starting out. Even if you're trying to see details work, I think this works really well. There is one other tool out there that I think is a lot better. It's a little bit more expensive, and I'll tell you that here in a second. But there you go. You can tell it took a lot of that wood out. It saved me a lot of time when it came to removing that stuff other than using that disc that I did in the actual how to make the flag video. But there is one other tool out there or attachment and that is the Arbor Tech Turbo Plane. I gotta be honest with you I haven't used it but from the looks out of it I think I would rather go with that. Now it's $150 and it does pretty much the same thing this does only it does it a lot smoother from what I can tell. You can't cut on the edge like you can with this. I think this is really good for the beginner. I think this is really good for detailed work you know but as far as it goes with you know overall smoothness and taking a lot of the work away you know when it comes to finishing I think it actually adds a lot of work because of those gouges you're gonna be doing a lot of sanding I mean it's a powerful little tool don't get me wrong but number one you got to be extremely careful with it number two I wish it was a little bit bigger I think it would have made a world of difference when it came to you know, just making things easier you can't really get into those grooves very well and after you're done using that, you still need to use that sanding disc. That's what I did. I put that sander disc on the grinder and I just went to town on this. And then I hit it with four different grits of sandpaper. Now, at the end of the day, this is what the flag came out looking like. 
You know, I think it came out pretty nice. I was happy with the way it was finished, but again, a lot of work still needed done after I took that wood out. I think if you have the extra money, I would take a look at the ArborTech planer. But again, you're looking at $150 for the ArborTech Termo plane, and this is $31. I'll put a link in the description below. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe. Check us out at ToyReviewZone.com. And we'll be back with more videos.